sorry, just wanted to uh, share that with you because other numbers like pi and e are transcendental. We say that they're transcendental. That's just a, a common word you'll hear in mathematical discourse. And uh, and that's basically what all that means. We can't really find a, a finite polynomial that has pi as a root. We just can't. And the proof for that is very, very difficult. I've heard from multiple sources it's pretty complicated and pretty heavy. So uh, I don't actually know it myself. Uh, same for E, I'm guessing. I, I know it's an irrational and transcendental constant, but I don't know... Yeah, I don't really know the, the details of its um, transcendence. And I've made other videos on E. E is a... I'm sorry. E is a special constant. If you haven't heard of it before, um, there are different ways of saying what it's equal to. And I'll, I'll give you the details in my other videos, of course. We should get back to hyperbolic triangles. Or hyperbolic functions. That's right. So, once again, as with uh, the projective plane, there are multiple ways of thinking about these functions that are the hyperbolic functions. I'm going to write down just the, the way we write them. So, as you can imagine, in hyperbolic uh, geometry, hyperbolic triangles in general have their own unique uh, kinds of the law of sines and law of cosines. Just as a casual thing for your information, I, I will list uh, the hyperbolic functions. It's, we basically say it's sine h, or well, this is sometimes said uh, sinh or sine, something like that. Uh, cosh is the next one. Hyperbolic cosine, that's the next function. Then we get hyperbolic tangent, or, or than, or something like that. And first I'll say what their expansion is, or, you know, how to represent this new abstract function in a way where we can actually calculate values, at least approximately. And so shine, or, well, I, I prefer to call it shine, is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. And cosh is almost the same thing. It's e to the x plus e to the minus x all over 2. And so this, this hyperbolic tangent, therefore, is the ratio sine over, or shine over cosine. And we basically get e to the x minus e to the negative x over e to the x plus e to the uh, negative x. Now, there are numerous properties of these hyperbolic functions that require the use of calculus to be proven. So if you're curious, please see uh, some of my videos or other people's videos on differentiation and Maclaurin series, as I said before. But for now, please realize that cosh of x is equal to, or it can be expressed as being equal to, cosine of i times x. This is something I find truly amazing. i is the imaginary unit, which you've learned about before, that equal to the square root of negative 1. And uh, please feel free to see my other video on complex numbers. They're, they're really my favorite set of numbers, my, uh, the, the complex numbers. And also, another interesting property, sine of x, the hyperbolic sine, is it turns out to be equal to negative i times the sine of i x and i could i could prove these it just takes a while to prove you can you can probably tell how this is true if you watch my other videos and do a little bit of independent study but this you know these these two formulas these identities can be vital in complex analysis and complex analysis, just so you know, is another branch of mathematics. Um, it's pretty interesting. It, we, we, you know, we use complex numbers. We also use some calculus along with it. So, yeah, that's... Um, I just thought I'd give you a sense for what these are. Hyperbolic functions, they're very interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. And I think that about wraps it up. That about wraps up our series. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your patience. And um, 
I hope you could appreciate some of this, at least some parts of the uh, of this trilogy. And uh, one way or the other, please have a have a nice uh, summer vacation, and um, guess I'll see you another time.